All right. Now, uh, that problem on page five, example nine, it's kind of like at the bottom. And uh, you get into the book a little bit. It's a little bit of an old school book. It's got some old colors in there. You get that nice green that you see. There's some yellows. So it's a, it's a pretty old book, but it's still good stuff in there. Um, and sometimes the data is a little bit dated. So if you're looking at example nine, it's a problem about population. It's a good problem. It's a pretty standard kind of math problem where you get some data and you want to do a regression. Now, honestly, if there's any main thing that I want you to understand from all the math you've learned before is that is what is what is a regression? And sometimes kids accidentally think a regression is when something is declining. No. Okay, you're thinking maybe about exponential decay or maybe like exponential growth, but when we say regression, we're actually trying to fit data to an equation. Or to say it the other way, we're trying to fit an equation to data. Now you've done this before. Your teacher might have called it a line of best fit. Okay, you might have done a scatter plot and put a bunch of points and then you got out a ruler and you tried to connect the dots. Or maybe you did it with technology or a computer. It's like a line of best fit, but we call that a regression. And that's what a lot of people do that end up with like a sort of like a math degree. Sometimes people want to know, what do you do with a math degree? Um, yes, you can teach, um, but you also analyze data. And uh, I'm not able to stand in front of you and give firsthand experience of that, but when you analyze data, you're doing a regression. And we're going we're gonna to do that mainly with our calculator. Um, but I also want to model for you how you do a problem like this in your assignment. Okay, now listen, you guys are going to get into these assignments. Um, when you do the assignment, that's like the main way that you're learning. I mean, you're going to learn through the class lecture, but when you start doing the problems, remember, you're not doing them just to get them done. You're not doing them just to get it checked off, but to, to learn. And so how do you show me that you can do a problem like this? Because it's going to be mainly on your calculator, and I kind of want to help model that. Okay, the quick answer is whatever you do on your calculator, you have to put on your paper. I know it seems a little old fashioned, but you can't like share your calculator with me. It's not that fancy. So if we do something on our calculator, we have to show it on paper. Now, I'm not talking about like every button that you push, but I'm talking about like the results. And especially when it's a graphing problem, you show that graph, you show those results. Now, to do a regression for these pops, you have to get that data typed into your stat menu. Okay, now at your stat menu, you got to activate that by pushing the stat button. The stat button is kind of near the top middle. It might be a place, especially if you've gone through classes here at Redline that you've seen before. Please ask. Never feel like you're the only one if you're kind of lost. So I push the stat button, top middle, and I actually want to edit. I want to go to edit. Um, and you get sort of this home base here, L1, L2. It's basically columns of data. Now, maybe it'd be helpful if we kind of look at the problem a little bit here. It says that, um, you know, you've got a table. I'm kind of reading at the bottom of the page right now. You want to build a linear model. What that means is you want to do a regression for the growth of the pop. And then use the model to predict the population in like the year 2010, uh, even though that year has passed. So we've got some years, and a lot of times in math, years are converted, I like to say, to numbers. Now, obviously, a year is already a number. But what I mean is instead of typing in 1986, I can just type in 6. So 6 represents 1986. And you've seen this before. I'm just kind of saying that you're allowed to do this. So I'm typing in these numbers to represent those years. Now, by the way, the book does this differently. I'm doing that on types in 1986, 1987. And that's not wrong. It just ends up causing your graph to have sort of these bloated numbers. Um, I'm trying to keep the numbers a little simpler. Now, these populations are in millions, okay, but we don't need to add six zeros, okay, to, to sort of type that in. We can type in 4,000, although it's actually 4,000 million. 
which by the way is four billion. So they're changing these populations based on a scale and the scale is in millions, which actually means the numbers we're typing in represent billion. So the last number I typed in was 5.4 billion. I'm going to be honest, I don't have like, you know, six steps that are going to show up on this blue screen. I'm not writing down the steps either, but if there's a step we're going through and you're like, I need to remember that, write it down. Or if it's kind of just a refresher, great. Just go along with it, you know, and refresh yourself. But we push the stack button, we type in the data. Now, our goal here right now is to like see this graph. Um, we go back to the window. And as I've said a couple times, it's sort of the place kids don't like to go because you kind of have to think a little bit. And the first thing I notice when I type this window is that it's not in the right mode. I'll be honest, I forgot. I forgot my calculator was in parametric mode. We're not in parametric land anymore. We've left it and gone to function land. So at some point, push the mode button, top of the calculator, and change it back to function mode. Change it back to function mode. Because we're trying to come up with an equation of a line as y equals mx plus b. So that's a function. Now, if I push the window again, I still need to do some thinking. Okay, And the thinking is what kinds of numbers are part of this analysis? Okay, And I, I don't mean this to be like sarcastic or, or uh, act like I know better, but I realize that this is sometimes hard for kids. Like, what numbers? Okay, well, think about the X numbers you typed in. You know, you typed in like six, seven, eight. That's like the X min and max. Now, I'm going to start at zero because it just makes sense. I could have started at six, but it's nice to see zero because that takes you back to like the axis. How about this 10? Do you realize that I need a little more? Now, I could type 11, but I like to go like a little beyond because the calculator can do whatever I tell it to do. I don't need to just stick with those numbers. Like I can just see a little more. So what do you mean see a little more? I mean, I, I sometimes generally say maybe like double it. Let me hear it. Okay, it's a little bit of a what do you want here? Now there is something, if you read the, the book with me, it says we, we want to predict for 2010. If you're reading that, you're like, wait a minute, I need to get the whole way to 2010. So, you know, at this time I could sort of take care of that and I could go all the way to 30. Now remember, 30 represents 30 years from my zero year. My zero year is 1980. I remember the 1980s. Good music. Listen to it on my Walkman. Okay. Uh, I found out through my son. that says, I just pick big numbers. Like, what you're doing is you're going up to the moon. And then you're like, I can't see red line because I'm all the way up to the moon. So don't like zoom out and just type big numbers. Pick numbers that are going to let you focus on the, on the space that we want. Now the numbers we typed in are from 4 billion to 5 billion. Okay. I'm going to pull a little fast one out. I'm going to say, I still like to see zero because I want to see the axis. So what are you going to type here? Are you going to type 5 billion? Well, go beyond it. Like, it's okay. Go a little beyond. How, how far is a little beyond? I don't know. Um, I kind of do know because I tried the problem before. But if you typed in 5,400 right now, you would realize that that's not enough. If you typed in 6,000, you'd say, you probably want to see a little more. So I'm just kind of picking 7,000. It's actually 7 billion. And if you know a little bit about the planet, you know that the population it's not more than that. So, you know, that's seven billion. That's more than the population. All right. One more thing. Maybe. There's a lot more things. But in the, uh, in the second y equals screen, second y equals, you kind of have to tell the calculator, hey, I'm not just graphing like a parabola. I'm trying to graph data. 
And so you gotta like turn that on. So the main thing you do, I chose number one, I just hit enter. The main thing I'm gonna do is turn it on. It tells the calculator to look into that stat menu. It tells it to look at L1 and L2. So we turn it on. There's other ways to turn it on. There are some shortcuts, but um, at this point, cross your fingers, hit the graph button, and see if you get a scatter plot. So I just I push the graph button. Now, you guys would be really close to each other it's easy to help each other but if you still want to help each other do that okay it, it's a little you might get faster access to the right answer here hit the stack button edit okay just making sure um, what's going on if you hit the graph button okay that means something wrong with your window um, make sure that you know, you didn't put a negative in there. Uh, you, you kind of put it in the wrong spot. It, it, if you hit second one equals, okay. it's, it's to turn that one. Okay. You have to hit enter there, so you can turn that one. Okay. And what, what do I do? It actually tells the calculator to graph the data. Okay. It tells it to look at L1, L2. Where are, how are we doing? There. Here, look at this window. Some of you need to see the window again. I appreciate your patience if you're already here, but that's cool. something didn't work, try to do what's going to work, what, what you can do here, like maybe keep listening. Um, I don't want you to be frustrated, but I'm going to keep going here. Now, I guess what I'm going to do is, is kind of say, okay, uh, maybe this was part A, you know, like to come up with the graph. Now, if you're doing this on paper, you'd have to show it. Watch what I'm doing here. It didn't take me much more than 13 seconds to graph this. So when you do your assignment, that's sufficient. It's a sketch, okay? You don't have to get out a ruler and graph paper and do all that. Okay, now, listen, you're gonna do this on a test. Sometimes kids like, I'm not gonna do this on a test. This is like too much. You actually do this on a test. I'm not trying to get you scared if you're having a problem right now. I'm just saying when you do your assignment, make sure you can do this. Don't just like write it down because you saw it in the solution manual. Don't just write it down because your neighbor got it to work. So we show a little sketch. Okay. Now, um, we're trying to do an analysis. Analysis would be to come up with an equation. I don't see an equation yet. Now the truth is the equation is going to be this line right here. But before you draw it, we're gonna get the calculator to do it. Okay. And honestly, this is like the main reason we're doing the problem to come up with this equation. Stat calc. Stat calc. Might be a place that you've seen before. If you've not been in this place, this is like a way to calculate different types of equations. Number four looks like a friendly equation. Number four, ax plus b, otherwise known as mx plus b. Okay. Now, all I really gotta do here is just sort of activate this command by hitting enter twice. Because the first time you hit enter, it just pulls up the command, the second time it does it. And ta-da. Okay, that's a lot of math right there, powered into or, or squeezed into a little calculator. 
Now, if you're like, I didn't get those numbers, it could be that you mistyped the number. It could be that I mistyped the number. What do, how's this looking? Is it the same? Okay. So, but if you didn't get it, don't panic. You just mistyped something in that list. Okay. Just roll with this because if this was your assignment, the next thing you would do is you would write this down. Okay. So we write down our equation and realize that this equation is the equation that relates years with population. It, re it relates years with population. Notice that I'm using like two decimal places. I'm not going to get in a discussion on like sig figs. I'm not sure if that fits here, but we'll use a couple decimals. Now there might be a question in your assignment that sounds like this. It might say, interpret the equation. To interpret the equation is to talk about what the numbers mean. Now, if you say that this means the slope, you're not wrong, but you're not interpreting the equation in the context of our little word problem. So instead of saying that's the slope, you want to say that it represents the change in or the increase, to use maybe even a better word, in, well, in blank. Now, do you realize what's increasing here? It's the population. So it's the increase in population. And to really make this slick, you would say per year. Because we know, we should know that a slope is always a rise and a run. So the population is rising, the years are running. What about this number, if you were going to interpret that in the context of this problem. You're not going to say y intercept, right? Okay, we're trying to say what that means for this problem. Wait a minute, the y intercept, what does that actually represent? So, I didn't really get to say this yet, but there's a lot to say. When you're doing your assignments, always follow the book's directions. Like if it says, interpret the problem, make sure you add that. It, it might be a part C, it might be just part of B. So you always follow the book's instructions unless I somehow otherwise negate them by maybe making my own instructions. But a lot of times those paper, the paper I hand out, I just clarify what the book's trying to get you to do. I know people look at it like, there's a lot on this assignment. That's because I have all these hints and clarifications. Read them and follow the book's instructions. Now, I'm kind of using the book here, page five, page six, but they really didn't ask like any questions. They more just said, do the problem. So I'm kind of making up what the questions should be. And they did ask this question, but it wasn't like part A, B, C, D, but they did ask us to predict for 20, oh, hold on a second. Um, they, they did ask that, sorry, we'll make that part E. I'm just straight out going to tell you what the book's gonna ask you to do when you do this problem for an assignment. They're gonna ask you to superimpose the equation onto the graph. When I drew this line, I superimposed the equation on the graph. I'm not going to lie to you, I drew that before I knew that. You should understand this. Now follow me here. I went to the y equals screen. Now the y equals screen is where you type in equations. And I'm typing in my regression equation. I'm typing in my y equals mx plus b. Now you should do this because this kind of will prove to you that you're right. Or maybe it'll show you that you made a mistake. Hit the graph button and watch your masterpiece. Okay, you hit the graph button and you actually get the equation. I know it's not the greatest thing ever, but it's right. Okay, it's the equation fits the points. All right, so that would be like maybe part D. <clears throat> part E. Predict. There's a 
couple different ways you can do this. Probably the most straightforward way is just to kind of go back to basic math where you plug in 2010. Where you plug in 2010. So I'm just kind of basic math plugging in 30 into my equation. And of course I'm using the calculator. Now as we get going through this year, you guys will, you will appreciate, you will agree that you need to show your work because you can't do calculus in your head. But I'm not going to try to make your life miserable by saying you gotta show stuff like this, okay? Sometimes kids get worked up like, should I show that? You can if you want, but that's pretty basic stuff. I expect that you can plug in 30 and would probably appreciate being told that you can just write down seven, two, uh, what was it, seven, two, eight, eight, two. But what I'd like you to do, since I'm giving you permission to do that, is to show that you understand what it really is. And it's, did I have too many zeros? No, you move the decimal six places because it's, it's really seven billion. So, you know, if you just wrote down 7282.2, you could do better than that. You could tell us what it really is. In other words, because it's in millions, it represents seven billion. Okay, but you don't have to like show any other work. You'll do one or two of these in this assignment. You actually will do some others of these regressions throughout this year. We'll do some regressions throughout the year uh, when we get to calculus even. So that's why I want you to have that skill. If your calculator how function and maybe you push the wrong button, um, get some help with it. I can help you. When you do the assignment, try again. I don't want you to just kind of say, well, I can't do it. Um, it's all right, you're not the first person. Some of you I know haven't used the calculator too much. We want to help you keep learning how to use it. Well, you really could start section or lesson. You could start assignment one one now, okay? So you gotta get started. I hope that you've started 1-4. I'm gonna give you a little work period tomorrow.